Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Ty. I had some really super good Baskin Robbins ice cream, so I'm feeling in a very, very good voiceover mood right now. Welcome back to another top 10 video. Today, we're gonna be talking about 10 common Lego building mistakes. And along the way, I'm gonna give you guys some insightful tips on how to turn those mistakes into strengths and in the long run, just help you guys have a more fun Lego building experience, I guess you could say. These are all personal opinions. I don't mean in any way to make you feel crappy about you know yourself as a Lego Lego builder because I assure you all of us at some point or another have come across these problems in Lego building. Real quick, want to give a big thanks to my boy Sacred. He is like the Lego god. He made an awesome tips and tricks video on his channel. This is actually in collaboration with him, so go give him some love. Go check out his video after you watch this one or if you're a savage memester, simply click on the video right now. The link is in the description. Anyway, let's dive right into this video. So, first off, I want to talk about using too much color. Now, don't get me wrong. I love color, but sometimes people push the limits. Take a look at this house, for example. This is honestly kind of fun because I got to build like a second grader. No offense to all the second graders. Don't use too many crazy colors. And that brings me to my second point, which is don't use too little colors. I want to talk about a fundamental concept. So there's two types of colors. There's base colors and there's detailing colors. So base colors are often subtle, they're neutral, and you can often use this color a lot in a build without it being too distracting. So colors like dark and light gray, white, and occasionally colors like tan and brown. And then on the other side, you have colors which are more on the detailing side, brighter colors, colors that can catch your attention a lot more. Th these are colors like red, yellow, blue. Anyway, I've taken these two houses and I've combined it into a version which is somewhat more appropriate in terms of color. If we take a look at this house, you can see the main base colors here are black and tan. And then for the more poppy colors, we have red, which is used primarily on the roof. And then also we have the window shutters, which are in a dark green color. So more on the subtle side. As you continue building and gaining experience, you'll realize how um, much of a powerful effect color can have on a build. So take advantage of it. Just have a good blend in between. Next up, we have using too many studs or too many tiles. So to give a basic explanation, tiles are smooth. So because of that, they're great for smooth things. And if you're using studs, which are more rigidy and textured and bumpy, they're great for impersonating things that are of that sort. For example, if you're making a car, well, since cars tend to be smooth, you wanna aim after, you know, some tiles. Take a look at this car, for example. I completely covered the top with studs. Imagine picking up a girl in this car. Actually, don't even, don't even bother to ask yourself that because, well, it's simply not possible. I've slapped on some tiles and the car looks much more realistic as it would with studs. So because of that, studs and tiles play powerful effects on the look of a build and can really pull off certain looks. So because of that, play around with it and see what you can come up with. Now, here's another one boxiness. Lego is naturally boxy. Take a look at a 2x4 brick. It's a rectangular prism. With just a few slight adjustments, you can turn something boxy into something very shapey. For example, if you're making a house, making the roof hang over the side by one stud, or, you know, just adding a few extra bits of height, it can significantly improve the way your build is looking. If you make extremely boxy builds, try to avoid this because in the long run, experimenting with shape can just really open your eyes to being more creative creative in the long run. Now, similar to boxiness is flatness. There are certain parts of a build that need to be flat if you're making a road, for example, but there's a lot of times in builds when you just have this large, empty, open area of, you know, just flat surface. Even just adding a little elevation or including something simple, like if you're making a nature build, like some terrain, it can really bring out the three-dimensional aspect of a build. Not opposed at all to flatness, there's just certain areas where it's appropriate and the areas where it's not appropriate, it's always fun to branch off of that and think of creative ways to just create more 3D to your build, I guess you could say. And for our next concept, we have not staggering. If you guys don't know what this term is, staggering is basically just overlapping pieces. Staggering can create a lot of structural integrity and can pull off really cool effects. For example, if you're making a hardwood floor or a brick wall, you can't really tell, but the little gaps in between the individual pieces can pull off a certain effect. So in the long run, staggering makes your build stronger, but can also make them look more aesthetic. And then I want to talk about repetition. Repetition is just the process of repeating the same piece or technique over and over again. Now, the main 
main problem about this, if you're repeating the same technique and piece over and over and over again, it can just get really boring and tiresome and it can often demotivate people to build something. So because of that, just try to avoid using repetition in the build. Also, it just, you know, avoiding repetition makes your creative juices flow. So in the long run, it gives you a much more fun building experience when you're constantly trying to think of new techniques and, you know, ways that you can use certain pieces. And I've learned that personally. Another common mistake that I see a lot is empty space. As the name says, it just creates a sort of emptiness in a build because there's a large open space, there's nothing in there to fill it in. Anyway, try to play around with filling in the gaps. For example, if I'm building a room and there's a lot of open space, we'll try including, you know, some fun little details like even something as simple as a rug, include a couch, a furnace, a bookshelf, a plant. Or if you have a large open wall, well, you can include something like a painting or just some windows. Another common mistake is over using default pieces. Now you guys are probably familiar with a lot of these pieces. These are like pre-made formations that Lego makes, including these default drawers, which actually function like real ones, these big rock pieces. Now these pieces are great, don't get me wrong. They're always fun to occasionally include in a build, but the only problem is that some people rely on these way too much, and that in the long run takes away what the purpose of Lego really is, which is thinking creatively, coming up with your own unique designs. I'm not completely opposed to these default pieces, but at the same time, it's always fun to branch off of these and try your own techniques out, trying to make your own drawers. Instead of using these rock pieces, try playing around with some slopes and creating some rock work. And then for our final point, I wanna go a little bit out of the box here and talk about mentality. Now, mentality has a huge effect on building, surprisingly. I mean, obviously, all Lego creations start in the brain. So because of that, having a healthy mentality is really, really important. Having motivation and enjoyment when you're building is really super necessary or else your builds are just not gonna really come through very well. I wanna give a big thanks to my boy Sick Bricks who made this point, but don't be discouraged. Discouragement is, is, is something that a lot of people come across when they're building. A lot of this is due to, you know, false assumptions. Like I don't have the right pieces. You are your very own creator. You make what inspires you. You. So instead of being worried about the pieces you have and feeling limited to what you can build, sometimes you can just think of a, a Lego creation idea by simply looking at one piece and thinking of a creative way to use it. And that's what I've done so much in a lot of my personal mocks and a lot of other people here in the community. So anyway, guys, stay strong. Don't be demotivated. And remember that you are a unique Lego creator out there and nobody can build the same as you. Anyway, guys, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed this top 10 list. If you guys have suggestions on any more tip and trick videos that you want to see, comment down below. I'm all about the comment section, so go crazy, but not too crazy. I'll catch you guys on the flippity flop. Take care and drink lots of water.